Hi again. It's my pleasure to talk about this week's Bible verse from Romans chapter 15. But before we get there, um, I'd just like to show you a dictionary that we have, um, because I'd like to read you a definition of one of the words that is used in the Bible. Uh, but the dictionary uh, is going to provide a definition here. Now, the reason why I'm using it is because when I was uh, a young boy in school, uh, we used to play a little game whereby if we wanted to describe someone's personality or character, there was a funny way to do it. So if there was uh, someone, a friend of yours, that was particularly um, tardy, or if you wanted to say that they were a clever clogs, you could say to them, do you know, if you looked up the dictionary word for clever clogs, the definition would actually have a picture of your face in it. And we didn't use this in a mean way, but it was just a, a fun way to compliment someone. Um, and it's quite interesting that uh, we can do that today because it's not a picture of someone's face that we're going to see in a dictionary. It's just a prescriptive definition. Now, the word is endurance or endure. Let me read you the dictionary's definition. There's two possibilities for endurance. One, it's the power or habit of enduring. That doesn't really help much in terms of defining what endurance is. But anyway, the second option is the ability to withstand prolonged strain. So, obviously I'm not teaching anyone uh, something they don't already know. We often think of endurance as something that's in the context of a sport or an exercise. If we want to develop strength, uh, that can be used over a long time. This is endurance. And so, as I say, this is a very prescriptive definition. But if we look at the scriptures, uh, we can actually see that the definition isn't prescriptive at all. But I would argue that it's actually a picture of someone that we see. Let me read to you. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Now, first of all, if you think of endurance, I would, I would argue that we wouldn't think of hope. If someone has endurance, they don't really connect that to hope at all. So it's quite interesting that the endurance that is taught in the scriptures actually produces hope in believers. And this is because actually what was written in the scriptures was written many, many years before, a long time ago, before any one of them was even there. And that was true in the early church, just as well as it's true here for us today. But you'll also notice from the context of this chapter is that it's not talking about a prescriptive de definition. Yes, it speaks about the fact that the scriptures were written, but it's more primarily talking about Jesus Christ. If I was just uh, to read the next verse, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So this is a, a, a prayer that Paul is, is writing and he's hoping that God would give people, believers, the same endurance, the same encouragement uh, which was an attitude of Jesus Christ. So actually, the game that I used to play when I was younger in school fits um, quite well with today's thought that I'd like to bring to you, is that when we think of endurance, we don't really think of Jesus Christ, do we? But that is exactly what is shared with us here in Scripture. It's the endurance that Christ shows us. And it's not only that, but it's the endurance that was spoken about well before he ever came on the scene and lived his life uh, as a Jew on the earth. So I just commend this thought to you and hopefully uh, it'll bring you um, some food for thought, some time for reflection, and that it would draw you close to God. Don't think of endurance as something that we get from a sporty context. Think of endurance as something that Christ shows us first and foremost. Let's pray. Loving and Heavenly Father, 
We give you thanks for your goodness to us. We are grateful that you reveal yourself and have revealed yourself long ago in the scriptures. And before any of us ever first drew breath in this world, you were thinking of us. As we pause to think about the great plan of yours to create, to redeem, and to bring us into a right relationship with you, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jesus, for you are the ultimate example for your endurance, for your love. And so we praise you, God, not only because, uh, not only for what you provided us in the way to come close to you in your death and resurrection, but also that you also promised us this, that you would do this for us long before it even happened. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your encouragement to us this morning. Please be with us in the week ahead as we continue to live and to love and to accept one another just as you accepted us. And help us to hold firm to the hope which you give in every situation that we might face in our daily life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all from me. Have a great week.